So my name is Lindsay Walsh. I'm Director of Basketball Development with Ontario Basketball. Most people call me Lou. Come on right through. Wave at the camera there on your way by. Okay, so why did I shove you into this small room with this amount of heat? Today I just want to have an opportunity to meet you face to face as an Ontario basketball staff. We've seen you throughout the year at the Ontario Cups. You've had your opportunity to yell at us, so now I'm going to yell at you. So we're going to go over Ontario basketball's vision, mission, uh, why we do what we do, um, and give a little education specifically on the stage of development that your son's currently in. Um, so I said that overview, what, why, how. We're going to talk about what the parent role is. We're going to talk about what roles you tend to play that aren't yours. Um, where it gives you some information, we'll talk a little bit about the logistics for your son over the next four days. Uh, we'll talk about what they're going to learn at the athlete orientation. We'll uh, address the camp schedule. We'll answer any questions and then you'll be on your way. Freedom for four days. Uh, so I always love to start this out by first saying thank you to you as parents. I grew up in the East Coast and I've been in Ontario for 10 years now and the dedication of the parents for their children and sport in this province is unbelievable and hopefully your child does thank you and if they don't, thank you. Uh, they might, when they're 30, realize what you've done for them but big thank you going out to you. I know you're in a gym somewhere in Ontario every weekend as we are and uh, that's a big shout out to you giving your kids this opportunity to be involved in sport. Okay, so this is what we do at Ontario Basketball. We are in the business of developing basketball for athletes under the age of 19, uh, developing officials, uh, dealing with you guys at the Ontario Cups, spectators. In the high performance stream, we have Team Ontario. We work in collaboration with Canada Basketball when it comes to the top uh, athletes that have national team potential as well for the cadet and junior ages. Uh, so this is just a little cap of, of what we do with Ontario basketball. So I want to just briefly cover our vision, mission, and value. Okay, so our vision at Ontario basketball. So world-class leader in the development and enrichment of people. Uh, and I want to zone in on the enrichment of people uh, because it's very important that we understand that sport is utilized as an opportunity to develop you as a person. And we want you to come into gyms and we want the kids to be in gyms and the officials and everybody in the gym to have an enriching experience. And oftentimes, more than not, we're seeing the opposite of that, where these uh, behaviors and these unex unacceptable uh, behaviors in sport culture are starting to impede and impact the kids. And therefore, we're seeing continual dropout rates. Therefore, the kids don't benefit from being involved in sport and evolving as people. Um, so our, our mission, obviously, to provide structure and leadership, and our values, I'll go into a little bit deeper today, but basically, Canadian values, the ones we all learn to treat one another the way you want to be treated, such and such and such and such, uh, but specifically the Canadian sport for life and the long-term athlete development model. So with respect to our focus on values, I want to just go into a little bit with respect to the stages of development throughout the lifespan. Uh, and I find this is the best picture to explain that. So essentially what we're looking at here is the lifespan from birth all the way up through to death, uh, or death, or death, or death, depending on what you do in between here. Um, so birth, active start. So the active start, birth to six years old. So we're looking at the fundamental movement skills of what? You've had your children. What did they do during birth to six years old? Cry. How? Cry. Okay. <laughs> Run holy. Okay. So it starts with rolling, I think, and then crawling, and then, and then into the running, and so on and so forth. So very basic movement skills. So then they move into the fundamental stage, which is ages six to nine years old. Learn to train 9 to 12 years old, okay? So you'll notice from birth to 12, these three stages are the foundation for anyone depending on which direction they're going to head. So essentially, we need to build your foundation of fundamental movement skills in order for you to build sport-specific skills on top of that and or be safely competing two or three times a week in a, in a competitive recreational stream and or safely competing in your men's or women's league once a week. 
Okay, so you have the foundational movement skills with agility, balance, coordination, and speed to execute these basketball specific skills. Okay, what happens if you don't develop these physical literacy skills? You get to your train to train stage, you're practicing four times a week, you're playing two times a week, you're in full stride, you catch a ball, you try to stop, you don't have the muscle strength, and <laughs> there's the ACL tear, the ankle injuries, all these things that start to happen just because we haven't fully developed our body structure and our fundamental movement skills at the foundational part. So we spend a lot of time with just those fundamental movement skills, agility, balance, coordination, and speed without a ball. Okay, so now your son is now in the train to train or entering this train to train stage. And here you start to notice that there's three different streams, okay? So here we have this excellence stream, okay? We have this competitive for life stream, and we have the rest of us, active for life. Okay, so obviously the excellent stream is much smaller population. Why? Because this is the athlete who's self-motivated, who goes above and beyond, who puts in the time on their own, who wants to be the best basketball player they can be. This is the, I call this the my dad wants it more than I do stream. So you're the one pushing the kid, you're the one getting the, oh, don't forget your sneakers, oh, don't do that, oh, come on, do this. Okay, so this is, I play club, I have the uniform, I have the $250 sneakers, oh my God. Um, but I don't really want to put in any extra time to be a high-performing athlete. And then, active for life, again, I said that's the rest of us. So this is, oh, as adults, we're confident and competent to move in spaces physically, so we meet the minimum daily physical activity requirements. Right, everybody? 30 minutes a day? What percentage of us are meeting those? 14. So heart disease, diabetes. Okay, so. We'll go into it a little deeper here. That's always my little jab, you know? I want you to go here, out of here, and start thinking about just moving your body for 30 minutes a day. You can do it. Okay, a holistic approach, an emphasis on ethics, fair play, and character building. Oh my, what I see you modeling in the gyms. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Why do we want our children playing sport? This goes back to what I said at the beginning. We want to develop well-rounded people. And we talk about well-rounded people in four different areas. Physical, the social, emotional, the mental development, and then the basketball specific. Okay, so I'll go into those a little bit more in depth. So the challenge is, yay, we all want to be competent, confident, high-performing, active for life, healthy, functioning adults. And we have 70% of us quitting at the age of 13. So these are the challenges that we're starting to face in our competitive sporting environments. Why? Oh, did you read it? Why do they drop out? PlayStation. PlayStation. <laughs> yeah, that's one reason. One of the most common reasons coaches, managers, officials, and athletes of all ages leave the sport, your unacceptable behavior in our competitive environments. Okay? So... I always want to just say, let's have this opportunity to reflect on our own behavior in the gyms in the past however many years you've been coming to our Ontario Cups and think about whether or not you're modeling great ethical behavior for your young children to learn from. We are actually considering moving to a respect in sport for parents because we don't know what to do with you guys. So now we want to teach uh, how to be a good person in a sporting environment 101 through respect in sport. Okay, so here's what we start to see. Oh my gosh, Ontario Cup! You want to win that gold medal Division 5? U12 Division 5? Here it is, it's on the line, boys! Go, go, double team, double team, come on, trap, zone, trapping, you suck, ref. Oh my God, ah! <laughs> Wow, I love basketball and being in gyms with you guys. 70% of athletes are dropping out at 13. I've made it this far, and there's some Saturdays that I walk out, and I'm like, why do I referee this game? Why am I here on a Saturday listening to you 
who for is so is so interesting because in Ontario you played by high school American rules while the rest of the country and world played by FIBA rules. So now you come into our gym context shouting about rules that you knew in high school that aren't even the rules we play now. <sighs> So frustrating, so frustrating. Okay, so long-term athlete development. Long-term, 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 long-term. Not the medal now, not let's double team use tactic, exploit the weaknesses of 11-year-olds to win the gold medal. Systematic and consistent approach between all of us as the adults that are shaping the environments that our children are a part of. Like, we're supposed to be on the same team, remember that? Helping raise the children of the next generation. Whew! Development, 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 development. Recognizes that you need those foundational movement skills regardless of which direction you're headed later in life. Okay, let's talk about your role. This is the one you'd think it is. We talked a little bit about that. Oh, get him in the car? I don't care what your coach said. I know he said go there, get to, this is, you need to do X. Oh, this is a team sport. We're trying to teach children how to work with others towards a common goal, know their role, play their role, work with people they don't like because we have to when we get into the work environment. They're my, they're my colleague. I have to effectively work with them. That's what this is about. We got you telling them something the coach isn't in hold. My yeah. Make your bed, make your bed, make your bed, make your bed. No, not your role. Four most important words that a child needs to hear from their parent. Give me some examples. Good job, too. Did you have fun? I love you, three. I believe in you. I believe in you. See, the interesting part about this is I can't be the parent. Nobody else can be the parent. You're the one with that role. And you need your child to understand that you believe in them no matter what. If they can put a ball in a hoop or they can't. So that when they face challenges throughout their life, they know that you believe in them. Even when they don't believe in themselves, I failed my grade 11 chemistry. I got my scholarship to this, that, or the other school, and after a semester, I failed. Do I just come home, or do I know you believe in me? Do I make a change and start to develop and grow and get beyond that? Because I know you believe in me. And I was reflecting on this on my way up here, and I had written a poem for my mom for Mother's Day one year, and I think I was 20 years old at the time. And the line I wrote was, from your coloring book to your PhD, your parent support is the key. So we need to recognize your role and how important it is and what your children are taking from you and what messages they're getting from you from your behavior on these sidelines. Okay, enough, enough ranting, sorry. Okay, so the holistic person, what are we gonna do with your sons here for the next four days? We're gonna try and help them develop physically, mentally, socially, and emotionally without you. Yay! I always say the best part about these camps is you go home and the kids have an opportunity to grow in these areas, make mistakes, forget their sneakers, not drink enough water, not shower, stay up too late. And what happens is they start to see the natural consequences from not doing that. We're always here. Here's your gate, right? Here's your water. Don't forget your sneakers. Da, 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 da. Never a learning opportunity for me to go, do I have everything in my bag that I need when I get there? Because we're doing it all for them. And then you turn around and you're like, why is my child still living in my basement at age 40? <laughs> you never gave them an opportunity to learn how to do anything on their own. Little steps. Little steps. Okay, the four pillars. The physical pillar. We connect the dots for them. Hey, if you don't have great nutrition, hydration, and sleep, your performance on the floor, they're all connected. You're an athlete 24 hours a day. Functional mover, oh, this for boys, the flexibility, 
holy, we just play five games in a weekend and we get in the car and drive back to Ottawa without even stretching our hamstrings. And then by age 25, we're like, oh man, I used to be able to touch my toes. What happened? This is part of movement. Re rest, recovery, stretching, taking care of your body. Wind it up, unwind it. Physical work capacity, that's a little bit later in life when we start to do the strength and conditioning and building on top of this foundational movement skills that we have. I think this is the one area, the social, emotional, because it's like, they call you guys helicopter parents, eh? Woo! Oh my gosh! I never have an opportunity to develop social, emotional skills. And now we have the introduction of what we like to call PIDs. Personal isolation devices, the iPad, the iPhones, everything where I can ignore the opportunity or avoid the awkward encounter where I don't know you and I have to make eye contact and say, hi, I'm Lou. I'm Jay. Nice, nice to meet you, Jay. Our children aren't developing those skills because every situation, they're just isolated in a screen. So no, no, no uh, phones over there. Please don't text your child at three and say, why didn't you text me back till nine? Because they didn't get back to their phone till nine, they're busy. We're trying to help them develop these ability to lead themselves, communicate and connect with people they've never met. It's a, it's a life skill. Ability to cope and resilience, same thing I just talked about. The mental pillar, Focus, which is, it's tough for all of us, but we need to learn ourselves. What's my focus? What distracts me? Every 20 seconds, you know, I started, you were in, here we go, 20 seconds later, you're making your grocery schedule and thinking about the other child you got to go get. And It's how do we stay conscious and mindful in the environments that we're in, not missing everything. So we talk about that with them. Energy, arousal, uh, energy and arousal levels. So, for example, learning that you might be playing good defense, you reach the official calls a foul that you don't think is a foul, and then what are you going to do? Oh, that wasn't a foul. What? Oh, my dad's over there. He's, that's not a foul. foul. Or it is. You think your child got foul. They hear you yell foul. He say foul. That's a foul. You know what? The truth is things in life happen that you don't have control over. And the only thing you can control is your emotional response to that situation. Little learnings that happen. Same, you're gonna get tons of information, or story, tons of examples in your lifetime where things are gonna happen. The only thing you have control over is how you respond. And you learn that through sport. Three C's, so that's the connectedness, the consciousness, and the composure. So again, we are just working a lit, like with this, these kids for, four days, how to connect with other people, the eye contact, the physical touch. I just connected with him, don't even know his name. Oh my gosh, I'm passionate about this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Basketball specific. This is the one we all focus on, right? I talked about the ABCs, the skills, the concepts, and the decision making, okay? So we have the foundational movement skills. I can move in space, I can jump, I can, Give me the ball, I can land. I have those functional movement skills to do that. Now I need to teach them basketball wise in these four areas. So they can move fundamentally with their body, okay? Then we build on the fundamental sports specific. So how do I pass? How do I dribble? How do I shoot? How do I play defense? So that is the foundational piece of it. The technical piece, okay, is the how, not the how to, but the when to, the decision making aspect of the game. So now I know how to dribble, pass, and shoot, but now I need to know when to do that, because it's not just me on the floor. I have four other people I'm playing with. Okay, so I know when to, so for example, a decision making thing that we'll do here is the object is to get the ball in the hoop. So if there's nobody between me and the hoop, I'm gonna attack it and score. If on that attack, one of my teammates defenders helps and I see their chest, my decision is when I see a chest, I make a pass to the open person. Okay, so that's the part that we're building on. Strategy. So this is 
law, uh, conceptual ways to move on the floor. So there's different ways the ball moves on the floor. What do I do if I don't have the ball? What do I do if I pass the ball? So we pass, cut, fill, what to do conceptually, offensively, to move effectively with four other people. And these concepts are universal. So I can play in Nova Scotia with four people I don't know, and I can play in BC and Ontario because we understand timing and spacings and concepts of how to move on the floor. Tactics are what we are trying to get away from. Tactics are short-term, um, uh, not I don't want to use that word strategies, but uh, like, for example, zones. Okay, so of course 11-year-olds are very good outside shooters. So yes, we, as adults, we could coach and stand in a zone and be like, ha ha, you're 11 and you haven't developed your shooting yet. We're going to win this gold medal at U12. Let's exploit your weakness as an 11-year-old. They haven't had the opportunity to even develop the skill. So we have young player rules. Play player to player so they have the opportunity to consolidate these skills so that when they get to an appropriate age where tactics can be used, they have the skills to execute and the decision making to execute against the tactic. Like you can set a ball screen every time at 11, th 13 and get a score. Go ahead. Yay, you're the best coach ever. We haven't developed them physically. They don't understand when to do anything on the floor and they don't have the skills to do it. We're not being successful in that manner. Okay, now, how old are they? 12, 11. 10, 11, 12. They're between learn to train and train to train. Some developmental, uh, so we want to continue to build on the athletic base. We want to avoid compensating for the lack of skill with the use of tactics. I just talked about that. And we want to uh, consider them physically, mentally, and emotionally in addition to just, okay, here's how you play basketball, go do it. We want to consider what are your abilities mentally, socially, emotionally, and physically at this age. Physically, oh my gosh, you're going to connect with these, I think so. Significant changes in muscle and fat. So we'll see some of the different maturation rates, like some of these boys, they've hit their peak, or sorry, they hit their puberty, and some haven't. And you stand them side by side, and literally this boy's half the size of this. Those are developmental age differences. They mature at different rates. This is between the genders, and the one that just reminds me every time is it's different between people, and it's also different between your own limbs. So one day, my arms are this length, and my legs are this length, and the next day I wake up, my arms are a little bit longer, but my legs aren't. So, and you probably see that in your sons, too. Their arms start to get really long, their torsos haven't grown yet, their feet grow, their legs grow, so they're all arms and legs. And so we go around and we're like, oh my God, that kid's going to be 6'2". Look at his small torso. He's scratching his knees, standing up. His feet are size 10. And he's like, oh my gosh, you want me to run and jump and stop and think and catch a ball and finish and shoot and you're yelling at me too? The kid can't even friggin' stop without a ball. His legs and arms are the different length than they were yesterday. Let's give him, like, throw him a bone here, hey? Like, Relax. How did you see him? He ran over. Oh my God! It's like I can't even stop and coordinate my body the way I want. You know, like let's think about where they're at here. Okay, here we got the peer influence. Oh, what's cool? What's my? What are my peers saying? I can't accept responsibility if we we'll freaking give them any. Give them something to do. A role. What happened to the freaking chore list and the family also? They still got that. Yeah, give them some responsibility. They enjoy cooperating with each other, with us. As long as we start to feel some tension between what my friend says, what you're telling me, I'm thinking on my own, and because I knew more than I knew last year, I know it all. Right? That's his, his frame of reference. Egocentric thought, it's all about them. We gotta keep on reminding them. Not, oh yes, honey, oh you'd like that? Oh yeah, I'll get back in the car and drive over there and get that for you because that's not reality. That's not the real world. <sighs> fear, fear of failure. Fear of failure. 
Okay, so I'm already afraid to execute these skills and try them. Plus, we're in an environment where people are yelling at me. We're not helping the fact that they're already afraid to try new things. We're just compounding the pressure. Uh, decision making, positive reinforcement, imperative. Everything we do in the next four days is great try. I, I see what you were I see what you were seeing on that pass. That was that was a good thought. Stop it there. Yeah, the ball went flying out of bounds, but I saw you see him and try to make that pass. You we told you to work on your left hand. I see that you're trying with your left hand. I tell these kids if you don't. Use your left hand as much as your right. By the time you're 18, you're going to be walking around like this. Like, I mean, I'm like, you know how your right feels different from your left or your dominant feels different than your non-dominant? It's because you use the other one. If you used it as much, they'd feel the same. So just pointing those things out for them. Positive reinforcement. Okay, I went into that a little bit deeper. Okay, so what's the focus? We call this the Goldilocks effect. Anyone read that? Do you still read that to your kids? Goldilocks? No? Too much, too little, just the right amount? Okay, so here, this is the development versus winning focus. How do we get just the right balance between the two in terms of focus? In this stage, we want to develop these skills. It's not this, who cares about this at this age? This is about learning. This is about performance. This is about process. This is about outcome. This is about practice. This is about game. Where are they and what do we want to focus on? For now, it's this. Work on developing weaknesses. This is a safe environment where I can go, you know what, I'm not very good at my left hand. So I'm going to work on that. Then that's OK in this environment. Here, I'm, I'm not going near my weaknesses. They're going to set a ball screen to the right, and I'm going to finish with a right-hand layup every time. I'm not going to focus on my weaknesses. Okay, so a lot of focus on developing. Said it already, the focus here, skill development, Canadian sport for life, understanding who they are and how good they want to be, not how good their parents think they are or how good you want them to be. Them thinking about where am I, what do I want from this, why do you play this game? Practice to game ratio, I put that up there because I think that's something that as parents you need to start to be critically thinking about what club does my kid play in and if they're 9, 10, 11, 12 and they need to practice four times as much as they play and my club's practicing once a week and playing twice a week, well that ratio doesn't really work in terms of developing skill for my kid. That's like taking the exam twice a week and studying once. You, you learn throughout the semester and then you take the exam. The game is an opportunity for you to try out whether or not you've consolidated these skills and see, oh, I haven't quite got that yet under pressure. So now I go back to the practice context and I work on refining that. Oh, positive, uh, fun, fun, fun. Mortgages aren't fun. Car payments aren't fun. Basketball is supposed to be fun. Stop bringing your adult problems into our children's sporting environments. If you have anger issues, please go address them elsewhere. <laughs> Don't yell at the referee who's there giving back to you the game they love for your child to play because you haven't addressed some issue that you need to get out. Teaching athletes principles of play. I've talked about this. It's not about me standing over here and saying, Johnny, go screen down. Over there, go. Come on. Yep. Okay, now shoot. Oh, no. You have the skills. You can move with the ball. I've taught you the decision making. Now go paint your picture. Have a great time. That's what's so fun about it. Creativity. When I'm relaxed and I have the skills and tools. Do, 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 do. No, nope, she's not open. No, it's you. Yes. Bam. Not, yeah, down screen, oh my God, find him, call it right. Oh. What are they going to do? Stay in here. I don't think you had an opportunity to see the rooms, did you? Yeah. Oh, you did. No, Excellent. Did. No, you didn't. Oh, my gosh, it's a beautiful spread. The kitchen's <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> I laid down in that bed, and I was like, oh, man. Okay, no, they have what they need. They're, they have their own bedroom. There's a TV in the bedroom. They share a kitchenette and bathroom full fridge, 
I hope you taught your kids not to microwave anything on styrofoam because that catches on fire. Uh, there is a microwave in the kitchen. They can learn. Yes, yes, we've had, we've had them learn <laughs> how to exit a building. <laughs> how to exit a building quickly, no. <laughs> okay, 24-hour security closed circuit cameras. At 8 o'clock, the front doors close and lock, so you can only get in and out with a key. Um, talked about what uh, they're sharing there. There's a phone in each room. We took bets on how many 11, 12-year-olds have their own cell phone these days. No? Okay. So 50% maybe? <laughs> so if your child doesn't have a cell phone and you would like to call them on the landline in their room, please stop at the front desk with their room number and they'll give you that extension. First year we didn't do that and we had all of you calling at 8.30 p.m. to the front desk to get transferred. It was a disaster. Please don't come and take them anywhere. That's when we go into freak out mode. So if you have a family emergency, please let us know that your child will be leaving camp. Um, supervise at all times. We have about eight staff here plus the regional coaches. So one, two coaches to every 10 kids. What can you attend? The five on five. Please come back and pick them up on the last day. Yes. <laughs> I'm only willing to do this for four days. Can't attend anything else. What's the rationale? Give them some space to learn and grow. They're going to be all right. I made the mistake of putting buffet style up there, but I continue to do it. I just point out that it's not all you can eat buffet. Yes. The, the boys do eat quite a bit. We have three square meals a day, snacks. You guys brought enough to feed Barry. I saw all the groceries you brought in. So I think we're going to be OK there. Athlete orientation, they're just going over all the welcome introductions, team building, getting to know one another, policies, procedures, expectations, code of conduct, how to clean up after yourself after we eat meals, hygiene.